Hi guys, welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video. My name is James. Today we're gonna to follow the six steps. We're gonna take out a push button flush that's constantly leaking into the bowl and then putting a new one in. If you follow these six steps, you'll find this easy to do. If you wanna use any of the tools that we use in this video, I'll leave a link to our Amazon tool shop. You can get everything that we use there. Plus we've got beautiful t-shirts for sale in our shop as well. Please comment guys, please like, please subscribe as well. I wanna know what you think about these videos, whether you think we could do anything better, whether you think we've missed something out, comment Comment below and the community of plumber parts will try to help each other out that's what it's all about guys anyway i hope you have a great time guys i hope you enjoy this video and i hope that you remember to hold tight let's get on with it right then guys i hope you understand that i've gone to the effort of building this little perspex back here so you can see to the bits that a lot of videos struggle to show you um, i'm revisiting this subject because i found that the camera shots that i did for you probably about eight years ago just weren't good enough and I just want to go back and go through these basic subjects again. So step number one is ascertain where our supply is coming from, which in this case is here. Turn that supply off and drain the system down. So guy's got a basic toilet here, so a push button at the top, standard loo as well. And if we actually look really closely, I can put my finger in here quite happily because I know that this has not been used. I don't want to get poo on my hands, do I? So yeah, I know that this is laying by, so we've got a problem with this loo and it needs to be changed. The first thing we're gonna do is find out where our water supply is. And that's easy for us to do because we can see it down here. Nice and easy to get to. Yeah, so all good. So let's just switch that off. So you'll often find it's a little valve just like this one here, uh, but sometimes you'll find that there's no valve. I mean, every install is different, guys. So just make sure whatever you do, you turn the water off before you continue with this job. So there we go, that should now be nicely isolated. Now we do what every plumber desperately wants to do, put a GoPro in the toilet and get it flushed. Goodbye, my little darling. But in all seriousness, what we're doing, we've turned the water off, now we're gonna flush out as much of the water into the toilet and down the bowl as we can. So once we've done that, we're gonna take the lid off, remove the old cable, remove the old button as well while we're here, might as well, because we're not gonna be using that on this new one. Then at this point, it's up to you. Some people would get a cup and they cup out all the water, or you know, you can get a towel or you can use blue roll. It's a good idea to get as much of the water out of the system, because if you've even got like a centimeter in at the bottom, when you get that out, it's gonna go all over your trousers and you're gonna look like you weed yourself, which, in certain circles is a good look, but in most social circles isn't a very good look. Literally use anything to hand to get those last little bits of water out of the bottom. Even if you have to use a little bit of toilet roll or like I am here, an old towel, just make sure you get it out. A centimetre of water in the bottom could easily be a pint's worth on the floor and we don't want that when we're doing this job. I'd also like to say as well, a lot of the time you can twist and just take out this unit like that and then replace it but sometimes you can't find replacements for these sometimes there's actually a nick in the bottom so it's great if you can do that that's fantastic but we're going to be changing the whole unit over here so you've got a full knowledge of how this is done right then guys so what we want to be doing next is removing our feed we can either undo this nut up here or you could even probably undo that nut we need a little bit of rag under here because there will be a little bit of water in here the thing is i'd probably go more on the line of either taking this off or undoing this nut especially that hole in the bottom of the toilet is big enough the thing is if we try and do this nut up later on once we've redone this toilet and everything's okay doing that nut up up there is a lot harder than doing this nut up down here so i'm going to undo this nut and take it out like that don't get me wrong guys, undo whatever nut you're happiest doing without getting loads of flooding and all that. I'm just giving you the option to think about which nut to remove to make this job easier for you because this is probably the most difficult part of this whole job. So there we go guys, that wasn't too bad was it? We've isolated the water, we've drained the system out, we've got it all nice and dry and we've isolated and removed our water supply as well. So let's go on to step two. Most close coupled systems are held down in four points. So we've got a screw up here, a screw up here, and a clamped screw there, and a clamped screw there. So what we want to do is undo all of those. Once I've done that, I'll always lay a towel on top of the toilet seat with the toilet seat closed, and that's where I'll do my work to put in a new flush unit. Right, so the hardest ones for us to undo are these here, purely because look at the shape. Look where I've actually got to get to to get these undone. Believe me, guys, putting them back on is no fun either. So you can see here, you've got to be a bit of a, an artist to get under here and fit, yeah, so there we go, and feel around to get these undone. Pop these to one side and keep them safe. So you'll often find these are just held on by screws. 
just like this, nice and easy. And just whip these out, pop these off the back. And that is it. This is a seriously easy part of the job, just taking these two screws off. Of course, I know we're not fixing into a wall with plugs and screws and that. Just make sure you're happy with the substrate that you're fixing into and you know how. Right then, so now I put my towel down on here and this should be the easy bit of the job. We can now just lift off this here. And hopefully, if our hole's big enough, we would now pull through the whole of our flush piece. You see that? So now everything's off and now we can lay our system nice and easily on top of here to work on it. We can get at everything and make sure that it's all tight as well. So guys, we're pretty much halfway there now. This is step three. We've done the really hard bit, taking the old system out. That can take some time. So be patient, make sure you've got plenty of time and plenty of towels about just in case you have any mini emergencies. So all we need to do now is take out the old flush unit. It's very, very easy to do. The old flush units are generally held on by a big nut on the end. You'll often need a large set of grips as well to get on here and undo that. So let's do that bit first. Also at this point, guys, you might find you've got a big kind of metal clamp bracket on the bottom here. Don't worry, I'll explain about that in just a few minutes time. While you're here as well, it's a good idea just to make sure that these are all done up tight. Viva make lots of different types of flush for lots of different types of system. So make sure you get the right one. All in all, I'd say this piece does it. This is the Skylo Universal Flush Valve. So I'm just gonna pop it open now. I love tearing stuff apart with Reckless Abandon, as you know. <laughs> So we've got our standard buttons that we're just gonna pop down here for now. We've got our main beast here. Now this has got a few little different adjustments on it that is gonna help you to know how these actually work. So the Skylo has three miniature gauge systems you've kind of got to get your head around. The one we're looking at here is our gauge for our full flush, and the one we're looking at the other side as well is the gauge for our half flush. We've also got an integral overflow built in that we can twist to open and then adjust the height of that according to our system, and then twist to lock it in position as well. After that, we've got two connection plates for the bottom of the system, one that's two inch and one that's inch and a half. And as you can see here, they're really, really easy to change over. And also it demonstrates how easy it is to change the flush unit over for servicing once it's installed in the system. If you look in the top right hand corner, there's a poll appearing right now asking you whether you want me to do a video on how to fully calibrate your full and half flush on a push button unit system. So please take the time to answer that poll and if you do want it, I'll get round to making it for you. So then guys, we've got two sizes, the two inch and the one and a half inch. I'm gonna use the two inch on here. Very, very simple for us to do. This is a very, very easy bit now. We've We've actually done the hard bit. What we do is we're gonna put in the bottom piece. We just pop our hand down here like so and pop that in. We've got a rubber washer underneath and a slip washer here to allow us to do our nut up nice and easily. And then we just do our nut up like so, very easy indeed. Once we'll do it hand tight, then I'll nip it up with those grips. Couple of little things I just wanna talk about this particular stage. Sometimes you can find that this plastic piece here is a bit too long and you'll find that it hits where it's being received in the toilet. You'll know if there's a problem there because you will never be able to get a watertight seal. So sometimes I'd say it's a good idea just now before you do anything else, just to make sure that that's okay. If it is too long, it's not the end of the world. All you need to do is get out a hacksaw once this is nut is on already and then cut that bit off so you leave yourself enough room. While I'm here, I'm just gonna make sure sure as well that these are nipped up nicely. Look, see look, that's a bit loose, that one there. Look we'll at that little nip up. And then we know everything's nice and tight. Just wanna say as well, guys, that certain toilets have different clamping methods. So sometimes you'll take the cyst off and find that you've got something that looks like this underneath. All you need to do is when you put this nut back on, make sure that this is underneath that nut so it's clamped up. And then you have a couple of little screws that will just go on on the outside like so, and they're the ones that will screw down through your toilet and then clamp everything up. So it's a similar principle, just a different way of doing it. I will be doing another video soon looking back into that. Uh, I have done one already, so if you do want to find out, just search our channel for it, um, how to change a siphon. Um, another thing that you might want to buy as well for this particular job is what we call a donut, because sometimes the donuts that are supplied at the suppliers aren't good enough. They're just not good enough for the job. Um, so I often find that the replacement ones you buy are a lot thicker, a lot chunkier. You've got a much better chance of getting a really good watertight seal. So without doing anything else, we're now ready to put our toilet back on and then we can connect our flush and get everything going again. It's an easy job, isn't it? Before you know it, guys, it's step five. <laughs> uh, reinstall the system. <laughs> So 
guys, you probably find it a bit difficult to see, but we do have a seal on here, and I don't think this is working very well. So I am going to put on my own new seal. After I filmed this, I had a quick gander onto Viva's website, and they do actually sell their own seal kits and clamp kits as well. So have a look around there to find the ones that you need. Now we'll just feed this back down to here. Pop this on like so. There you go, that's it, done. Now comes the convoluted tricky bit. You have to have a feel around to see where these are. There we go, that's in there. Oh yeah, I thought I should warn some of you guys out there that if you are gonna do this and you've got an old toilet with old nuts on there, for some unknown reason, these nuts might be rusty and yellow and incredibly smelly. Uh, it's nothing to do with me, I always get it in the bowl. At this point, I put my weight down on here and we try and get both of these tightened up nice and equal. Often you'll find with new donuts, the holes in the wall don't line up because it's a bigger, chunkier donut that you've put on. So just be prepared for that, guys. Your holes up here might not line up. Uh, once you've got that back in there as well, you can get your two top screws, the top retaining screws in at the top. So ours are just about lining up quite nicely, actually which is quite handy. Admittedly, guys, I was lucky here, even in this studio environment, but make sure you get good fixings when you put these back in. And a little old plumber's trick here as well, get yourself some of those lovely hold-tight rubber washers and pop them round your screw with a metal washer on the back to make sure that you don't scrunch up the porcelain on the cistern too much. So now we've got all that tightened up, we've just got an easy little bit here. Make sure you get an audible click when you're pushing down the actual flush unit back into its plate. At this point as well, it's a good idea to brush up on how you should calibrate your flushes as well. But as I said, that's a separate video. So we've done all the hard bits now, guys. We just need to pop our button on. Read the instructions. This is a very, very simple, easy piece of the job. <laughs> Cool. Now you've probably noticed the one thing I haven't done yet is connect the water supply. I always do that bit last. Right then guys, so we're now at our sixth and final step. We're gonna turn the water back on, test operation and test for leaks. I'm just gonna cock the top of the lid as well so I can look in, make sure everything's okay. And also it gives a little bit of light for our little camera down there as well. Try to use an adequate thread seal when you're putting the compressions back together, especially if they're an old one that you've removed and put back. It really helps with making sure there's no leaks in the future. Right then, so slotted screwdriver down where we were around it. Water back on. Now is a good time to check for leaks before you press the flush button. Because if you do that now and you find a leak, you'll know that it's not related to the flush happening itself. It's much more likely to be something to do with the tightness of the nuts or the fittings on the bottom of the cistern, not the connection between the cistern and the toilet. Right, all I've got to do now is flush the bog. job really really happy i'm so happy i'm gonna have a very very <laughs> middle class <laughs> cup of earl grey Woo! i love earl grey these days well nice just have it black as well because as some of you probably realize i don't really need 30 calories of milk do i i've got enough of them to get rid of already <laughs> something guys there we go all done six easy steps on how to change over your flush unit using the lovely little setup that i'm really really proud of behind us today also really impressed with viva's flush units and also their other range as well i'll leave a link to their range below and you can have a look at some of the stuff they do anyway as i said there's links to our amazon shop as well oh my god so go and have a look at that also links to my beautiful t-shirts like the one i'm wearing right now all right you know what i mean and also just so you know look they are pet they're chubby pecs all right it's been a gluttonous few months. I'm getting it sorted, don't worry. Even though I did have about 10 pints yesterday. 
Uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. Links to my vlog are coming up as well, so please go and follow us at Times with James if you want to find out sometimes about how we set this studio up to do work here, uh, but also about learning to fly and loads of other random things as well. Please comment as well below. I want to know what you think about these videos. If we miss anything or if you need any extra help, please comment. The community of Plumber Parts will be there to help you, I hope. Also, please like this video, and as ever, most importantly, please click that subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching today, guys. And remember, don't die. <sighs> <sighs> My God, this camera makes me look so wrinkly. So wrinkly. <laughs>